This little box lets you record any video stream with excellent clarity. Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here, and I'll tell you, I plug a lot of different devices into a lot of different televisions, including this tiny little Vizio, and it works great when I just want a screen that's super portable and easy to work with. But the problem is with video games, with streaming devices, it's hard to record. In fact, I will say it's essentially impossible to record a lot of video content. Enter this. This is the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro 4K video recorder box. And you can see on the back here that I have HDMI in, which happens to be my 4K Roku stick, HDMI out, which is going into the television. That's not what we're seeing. We'll get to that in a moment. And power. Now, the box, as you can see in these close-ups, gives you a lot more options. On the left side, there is a micro USB you can connect directly to your PC if you want to do some live streaming. There's also, much more importantly in my opinion, is a USB-A plug where you can plug in an external storage device and use this as a DVR for anything that's going to be on your TV screen. It is extraordinarily flexible. On the back there is a power button, which is pretty darn important, and that power, HDMI in, HDMI out, and that's 4K HDMI. On the right, nothing really. And then on the front is really interesting because there's line in, line out, and microphone. Why would you want those? Well, you can plug your microphone into this and now you can talk over what you're seeing or what you're capturing on video. So if it's a video game, you could actually capture your own narration or commentary or snarky comments about your opponents, depending on how you play. And then on the right hand side, there are three buttons that are duplicated by the excellent remote included with the Cloner Alliance device. The buttons are switching between H264 and H265, the ability to take a snapshot, and stop and record button. So you generally aren't going to be using those buttons because the included remote control, as you can see here, has all of that functionality and more, making it super easy to work with. But if you lose the remote or you forget to get batteries and you do need to supply your own AAAs, then you can at least get basic functionality with the functions and buttons on the box itself. So I really like it. Now, let me tell you some specs and then we're gonna jump right into some really interesting demos that I think you're gonna really appreciate. So it is an HDMI capture DVR or digital video recorder. It works with everything unless you give it an HDCP stream, which is an encrypted content protected stream. Generally, that's not gonna be what you have, but if you give it that, it can't un crypt or decrypt or um, unencode it, so you're gonna be stuck. Other than that, I will tell you, for video games, for Blu-ray players, DVRs, for cable boxes, for streaming devices, it can record anything. Now, if you use the built-in smart TV system on your smart TV, it can't record that because that's not looping out and coming back in. But if instead of this, I switch to using the Roku, then we find that I'm in good shape. Now, let's see, uh, it is flashing blue and green, which means that it's not happy about the input. So let's just reboot it, and that's easy enough. So H.264 and H.265 are two common video encoding systems. And the difference is that H.264 is much more common so it's probably what all of your computers and phones and all of your tablets will use, but it tends to make larger data files. H.265 is a little more modern. It makes smaller files by honestly about 40% because it has a better compression algorithm, but it is very new, so a lot of devices can't handle H.265. You will have to choose between those to figure out which one you want. I think the issue is that the Roku is not turned on. Anyway, we'll figure that out in a second. So it records in 
optimally 4K at 24 frames per second, and you're thinking 24 frames a second, that's exactly what movie theaters use. So they call this that cinematic sort of experience. And 24 frames a second is enough to fool your eye with motion. You can record at higher frame rates. It is a lot more data, and it is a lot more to be writing out to an external device. And in fact, I think it's flashing because I don't have my storage device in, but you can record if you really want the maximum frame rate, then they recommend 1080p at 60 frames per second. So you're not getting 4K, but honestly, you're getting an enormous amount of data. So if you want to actually go and manipulate it or edit it, you have a lot of information to work with. Probably 4K at 24 or 30 frames a second will be more than sufficient for you. But I'm going to go ahead and put this flash drive in. And let me tell you, this is a SanDisk 256 gigabyte storage device, right? It doesn't look like much, but what I love about it is it has USB-A, and then you slide this, and USB-C. So my computer uses USB-C. This device wants USB-A. So that's what we'll use, and I will plug it into the side, make sure it's plugged in properly, and that device, you want it to be as fast as possible. So don't use some clunker old USB flash drive or external hard drive, because if it's too slow, this is gonna have a lot of problems working with it. That will not be bueno. But you can have this formatted in EXFAT, NTFS, FAT32, or FAT32 as we call it, MDR, it works with a lot of formats. And what I really recommend is XFAT, or EXFAT, which is file allocation table, but it is really the best because it's fully compatible with Mac and Linux and Windows. And so for the demo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna record a little bit, and then I'm gonna take this and plug this into my Mac and show you the recording that we just made. Pretty cool, right? In fact, let's just jump straight to that demo. For this demonstration, I have the Clone Alliance UHD Pro in line between my Roku 4K streaming stick and my little Vizio television. So when it's on right now, I can just use the Roku as if it was just a regular TV with a Roku plugged in, so super easy to work with. And I can also, by pushing buttons on the UHD Pro remote, I can get that menu to come up. So I can go into record settings and I can choose between H.264 and H.265. And you'll recall that H.264 gives you bigger files, but it's more compatible. We can change the bit rate so we can go to high and I like when it shows me that it's recording, so I'll do that. And file size gives you maximums you can adjust, you can add a watermark, you can loop the recording. That all looks good. I'm gonna press back. And then we're gonna go back again. So now I'm back to having it be invisible. I'm going to, however, go back to home on the Roku, and then I'm gonna push record on the UHD Pro. And notice on the left is giving me all of these stats and it's telling me that it's recording. So now, as I'm going through the Roku, I can actually record everything that's happening. So all of this is being recorded, which is pretty slick. So let's go ahead and pick a show. I have to find something that I'm willing to watch or willing to share with you. And when I share it, I'll only be able to share a moment or two, but let's go to Transformers, Age of Extinction. That wasn't horrible. <laughs> and so all of this is being recorded right now, and that information on the bottom will go away momentarily. And then we can get rid of that. And so here's the recording. I'm talking over the audio because I don't have the rights to rebroadcast this. In fact, Let's, oh, I can't pause live TV, so let's go back. Um, I really don't have the rights to that, but we now have this recording, and notice on the top left, it's still recording. So I'm gonna push the record stop button on the remote one more time, and now it's saved. So I'll go back to home on the Roku, because why not? But 
now on the device on my little external sandisk usb i have an mp4 file that is the entire capture i just did to show you what i mean let's now switch to my mac ordinarily i'd just do a screen capture but that's done with the quicktime program which i'm going to actually demonstrate with our footage so i'm going to open this up and you can see here are three recordings <laughs> And the first two were before I figured out how to change the date, which is why they look old. But let's just go ahead and open this one with QuickTime. And it is playing. Oh, it's not yet, but it will be. And let me go ahead and turn the sound up. And watch. As you can see, it's a really clean recording. Of course, it didn't record my microphone because it's recording the audio from the TV or video source. If you listen, there's the clicks. So we're hearing the clicks from the Roku as sent to the TV audio system. And this is everything we just did. And then I said, well, let's watch Transformers. So we went to live TV. And so now you can hear that it has the audio from Transformers, and of course it has extremely clean video, and I can pause this at any moment. So there's a lot I can do with this footage. I can also not just bring it into a video editor, but QuickTime on a Mac actually has the ability for you to trim things. So I might say, let's go and get rid of everything up to where it actually started the footage of the show. So that's about here. So I can do that and then I can trim. And now I have footage, so you look here, starting at zero, I start right there and I no longer have all of that Roku interface, but all of it's been recorded. It's all really clean. It all looks very good. I can shrink it down. I can save it as a different file name if I want here. And this is 62 megabytes, so it's not particularly large, though of course I only have about 20 seconds of capture. Now, let me jump back on camera. It's a pretty compelling demo. I have to say I found this device really easy to work with. Just remember, it has to be in line on the HDMI signal that's coming into your television. So I have the Roku, instead of plugged into the TV, I have it plugged into this, and then the cable running to the television. So I can watch the Roku just like this, and I can do everything I want to do, and it works perfectly well. And I can just ignore that this is here, and then when I need to record or want to record, I can use the remote, or I can use that record button on the front, and I can record really as much as I want. If there's a movie that's just about to start, even one with ads, I could easily record the whole thing and then go on to my PC or my Mac or my Linux machine, bring up any of a number of different video editors, cut out all the ads, save it, and then maybe even copy that onto my tablet and I'm ready to go next time I'm on an airplane with relatively little work. If I wanna be even simpler, I can find a source that doesn't have ads, for example, a pay streaming service, which you can use here, because I can use the Roku to sign into Disney or HBO Max or whatever, and then I can use this to record that content too. Super easy, it's really, really easy to work with. Now. One of the other features that you can use this for is you can schedule recordings. So if I have this with a sports program and I know at two in the morning, South African rugby is going to come on and I really want to watch it, but I really don't want to have to stay up. So I make sure everything's set up properly. I make sure this is in the right time and date. And then I can go into the remote and I can actually go and set up a schedule. And that's as easy as pushing menu. And then let's see, so schedule settings. So now I can schedule a recording if I want. And that, you gotta say, is pretty darn easy. There's also a snapshot button, which is kind of fun too. Let's back away from that menu, there we go. So it's the snapshot button is the camera button on the remote or it's on the front. 
and you can just take a screen capture basically of your TV. <laughs> That is pretty cool, especially if you have a program where you can use, say, the Roku remote to pause the perfect frame and then use this to be able to get that screenshot. Very cool. So on the PC, if you're running Windows, you can also get something they call the Cloner Alliance Helper, and that has some video editing capabilities. But honestly, I find that you don't need it because it's generating MP4s, and MP4s are pretty universal with video editors. You can also use OBS Studio if you want to live stream and you want to maybe have it cut between this stream of what's on the TV and you on camera. So like a lot of video gamers do that kind of thing. This is compatible with OBS Studio. So let me unplug things. Just this is <laughs> going to cause that to get confused, but I'm just going to go ahead and let's say turn it off. Probably a good first step. And then here's my Roku 4K stick, so it's super easy to work with. And then this is the HDMI out that's feeding my television, which obviously it is no longer doing. That's power. This is my USB drive. And this is the unit. It's this small. It is 4.6 by 4.6 by 1.1 inches. And it's about a pound and a half, a little bit lighter than that, but it is, I can't emphasize this enough, really, really easy to work with. And because it uses external storage, I don't have to hook it up to anything. I plug in my external storage, record whatever the heck I want, and generally I will encourage you to record a few minutes before and after your program, just so you have a little extra footage to work with. And then just plug this into another device to watch things. I mean, how much could I put on this? If I had 50 movies, there'd still be space. I can take this and plug this into the back of a hotel TV, and most of them have USB and support for external MP4 video files. Crazy easy. I can just record my favorite shows, and then they're on here, and I can do this all without any DVR subscription, without having to worry about if that service is compatible with my recorder. This does everything other than HDCP, as I said earlier. So I am a big fan. This is definitely one to check out if you want to record anything, whether it's sports, whether it's streaming from your kid's phone onto the TV that you want to actually use. So you would stream onto the Roku device and then go through here and then you could record it. I mean, there's so many ways you can do this and obviously things like Max or Showtime or gosh, all the, there's hundreds of streaming services, Amazon Prime Video and the Smithsonian Channel and Netflix, all of that you can record with this device while you're watching the program or even while you're watching, you know, something else through the smart TV interface, as long as what's being fed into this device is what you want to record, you can record with it. One definitely worth checking out. I am going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Click or tap on that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you found this of value, and I certainly hope that you did. Great. This is the Clono Reliance UHD Pro 4K video recorder, and it is $287.50 at Amazon.com. That's a little spendy, but how much would you pay to you know, buy and download individual movies versus having a device that will let you record anything as much as you want, as many times as you want forever? So do the math. I think you'll find this is a pretty sweet deal and it's a great thing to add to your whole AV setup because it just sits there and it gives you essentially zero additional latency and just lets you, whenever you want, push the record button and just capture what's going on. So cool. Really, one to check out. That's all I got. I think I might go back to that movie, so I'll have to catch you in my next video.